Hi, this is Tim. Today we're going to talk about how to calculate the rate in a high-speed counter application for the Micro 800 PLC line using the Connected Components Workbench software. Please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We put out at least one automation video a week. And any questions that come up, feel free to put them in the comments. Your question this week could easily be next week's automation video. We're gonna be starting where we left off of our previous video. Actually, the first video of this series, we went through how to wire your high-speed counter and how to configure it in the Connected Components Workbench. And then in the previous video, we actually went through how a high-speed counter actually counts. So check out both of those. But now we're gonna add onto this program, we're going to make a rate counter to show you the rate of change or to show you the RPM or the feet per minute or whatever your particular scale is. For this video, we are gonna be using our PLC trainer. This is the Micro 850 version of our PLC trainer that has the HMI. We've kind of moved the HMI around that way you can see it easy. And also one of the PLC tools SIM-EOC encoder simulators. This is the open collector version that will work with these PLCs. But we're going to insert a rung right below our counter configuration. And first we're gonna bring down a reverse contact, examine if open. And then we are going to go ahead and bring down an instruction block. And for the instruction block, let's just type in a TON, and that's gonna be our timer on delay, which we've already learned about in the video. So if you have any questions about it, look in the description for this series. And this reverse contact, we're actually gonna address that TON. So it's gonna be TON1, Q. And that's gonna be true when it's done. So this is gonna say, as long as our timer's not done, run this timer. And what that's gonna make is a repeating timer. And we're going to put our preset at T number one S. That means we're gonna take a one second sample of our accumulated value. And we're gonna determine the amount of change. So now what we're gonna do is we're actually going to bring down a direct contact examine if closed and we're gonna look at that same timer. So TON1.Q. Now a lot of people are looking at this like, you can't do that, Tim. You've got a reverse contact and a direct contact of the same thing. Well, you can, and this is gonna be one of those great ones to think about and make sure you understand how the program flow of it works. Because yeah, you're right. As long as the qubit is not set or our timer's not done, it's gonna let this timer run. But this instruction right here is actually what's gonna set that qubit. So for one scan, this part right here will be true and it will work. So next we're gonna bring an instruction block down and we're going to use a sub or subtraction. And our input one is gonna be our high speed counter app one dot accumulator. That's our accumulated value. And then this one, we're actually gonna have to create a tag here. We'll just call this previous ACC. And that's gonna be a double integer. So we'll select that one. And then our result, we're gonna put in another one that we're gonna create. Let's just call it change in HSC. And that'll also be a double integer. And then after that, we're gonna add one more of those instruction blocks, and we're gonna use a move instruction. And this time we're gonna move the HSC app one dot ACC or accumulator to the previous ACC. So let's run through this wrong and make sure we know what's going on. So first, as long as our timer is not done or our qubit is not set, this timer is going to be enabled and this is a one second timer. So once it is done or mainly the accumulated value is greater than or equal to the preset, it's going to set this qubit. And so for that one little scan, this section is going to be true. And it is going to subtract our accumulated value from our previous accumulated value and put it into our change in high speed counter or our change in HSC tag. 
And then finally, we're gonna move that accumulator to the previous one. And that way we get the change over that second. So we're gonna go ahead and download this program. Okay, so our program's downloaded and I have that value right on the screen. That way it'll be easy for us to see as we're working with our encoder simulator. And we're gonna start in the reverse direction. So I'm gonna click there and our rate is minus 40. Now we're running 10 Hertz, but like we learned in the previous video, this is a quadrature counter. That means that each AB pulse is counted four times. So we have a negative 40 rate. And if we switch to our forward direction, it's gonna come up and now it is at positive 40. We can switch our frequency to 100 Hertz. And now it's gonna be at 400 because each one is quadrature. Then we can switch it to one kilohertz. And we're showing right about 4,003, bouncing a little bit. And the reason we're bouncing a little bit is we're doing our sampling in ladder logic. So you have that little bit of timing difference of how many it's counting compared to where it's at in the code. And we can finally go to 10 kilohertz. And that's gonna bring us up around 40,000. Yeah, 40,007, bouncing a little bit. Like I said, that bouncing is that little bit of variation from our scan cycle. But there's how you can figure out your rate or your RPM or your speed of your high-speed counter. Till next time. Hi, this is Till. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.